Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's video is about your next camera and all the decisions that go into making that, but we're gonna boil it down to the very top level in this conversation. And that top level conversation is gonna be about mirrorless or DSLR. The choice is yours. So uh, I'm gonna leave uh, chapter markers below. We're gonna do an introduction here, uh, some little bit of history. Uh, we'll cover the pros, uh, the advantages and disadvantages of DSLR, the advantages and disadvantages of mirrorless, and then we'll get to a conclusion at the end. Obviously, all of this is very personal. Your choice of camera system is a big part of your personal preferences, your photography style, your photography use cases. So uh, what works for me may not work for you, but I thought in this video to cover some of the basics just to clear up any potential confusion of the differences between mirrorless and DSLR cameras. So let's get started with a bit of disclaimers, I guess. First of all, um, I am firmly and happily in on team mirrorless. I've been using a mirrorless camera since 2014, the Fujifilm X system. Uh, before that, I was uh, from 2004 to 2014, 10 years. Uh, I was a Nikon DSLR user, uh, the D70, D300, and then the D600. So I'm very happy with uh, mirrorless, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. The second kind of disclaimer is that this video will not really discuss uh, sensor size. Uh, we won't go into a conversation about uh, which is a better fit for you crop uh, sensor, the smaller APS-C size sensor or the full frame 35 millimeter equivalent sensor. So uh, that's a topic for another video. So first, let's start with a little history of these camera systems. Uh, let's start with DSLRs. DSLR stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex, if you didn't know that. And it's a direct outgrowth of uh, cameras like this, this Pentax K1000, which is a 35 millimeter film camera from the late 70s. The early 35 millimeter DSLRs were basically these kind of cameras with a digital uh, back replacing the film, a sensor back here replacing the film. They were uh, often some of their first commercial kind of ones or used commercially, not consumer, were uh, on Nikon F3 bodies with a Kodak sensor. Yes, Kodak, that Kodak. And then Nikon in 1999 came out with their first professional uh, DSLR camera and uh, Canon followed in 2001. So there's, there's a bit of history here, but not a real long history, uh, but it does build on the history of uh, 35 millimeter cameras. So mirrorless cameras are newer. They uh, started in the late two th 2008-ish area or, or with uh, Panasonic was the first uh, to introduce uh, a consumer level oriented uh, mirrorless camera. So in conversation about these two systems, one of the things that will help you determine which one you prefer is the basics of how they work. So let's talk about the basics of DSLR versus mirrorless. The basic differences between these cameras can be found in their names. DSLR, Digital Single Lens Reflex, means there's a reflex system, which is, think of reflecting, system that takes the light from the lens, directs it up, and into a prism up here, a pentaprism, a five-sided prism that redirects the light to the viewfinder that you look through. So you're actually looking at what the lens sees with this type of camera. So I'm gonna take this lens off for just a moment and we'll go back over to here and over here. And you can see the, uh, the mirror system here. There we go, okay. So that's the mirror system inside the camera. And what I thought I would do next is also show you what happens when you take the photo so the mirror is gonna flip up and out of the way so that the uh, sensor, or in this case, the film on this camera, can be exposed to the light. So here we go. So that's how that works. That sound you hear is the sound of the mirror in the inside of here going up, the shutter mechanism opening and closing, and then the mirror going down. So it makes a fair bit of noise especially on this old 
camera. Even the newer cameras, this is a, a entry level Canon that I've borrowed from Highline College Multimedia Department. So uh, there's some noise there. That's the mechanical element of the mirror going up, uh, the, uh, uh, the shutters opening and closing, uh, which makes a little bit less noise. So on to mirrorless. So in a mirrorless camera, there is no uh, mirror that will flip up and down. It's just the sensor right behind the lens. So less mechanical elements going on and um, therefore that has some uh, practical and uh, sound advantages. So here we go with the sound advantages. It's just quieter. Versus again, the DSLR. Okay, let's get them both the same distance. Mirrorless, DSLR. Quite a bit quieter, less mechanically moving in here. Let's talk about advantages of the DSLR. So first, one of the first advantages is the optical viewfinder. So when you're looking through the viewfinder on any DSLR, when you look through here, you're seeing what the lens is actually seeing. So it's usually nice and bright, it's accurate, it shows you exactly what the sensor is seeing so you, there's no surprises or reduction in surprises about what's in your frame. Uh, so that also one of the advantages of that is it works really well in, in bright sunlight uh, and most other lighting conditions. Um, another advantage of DSLRs is they have a very long history of development, including the history of development that stretches back to the 60s with 35 millimeter film cameras. So it's a mature technology. Um, they've figured it out how to make it work in, in all the different systems of focusing and exposure and uh, sensors. So all that stuff is very technically mature. Another uh, advantage of DSLR cameras is there's a huge market for uh, used camera bodies and lenses. So if you're looking for a value or to save a little bit of money, uh, there are a lot of options because you have 20 years of camera gear out there plus some of the vintage stuff uh, from 35 millimeter days. Uh, additionally, um, you can get a really good deal oftentimes on a camera body that's just one or two generations old from the current one and uh, again get a good value just like you do with a used car. Uh, so there's a, a bigger used market out there just because they've they've dominated the market uh, of late. Well, until lately I should say. All right, some disadvantages of DSLR, the downsides. So the, the first disadvantage to DSLRs is they are technically mature. So while that's an advantage on one hand, the disadvantage on the other hand is that means there's not a lot of room for incremental improvement or, or is certainly revolutionary improvement. It is incremental improvements, which are good, but you're not gonna see a big jump from one generation of cameras to another. So from the camera manufacturer perspective, who would prefer you upgrade with every new camera, there's less reason to upgrade because the technology is so mature. So DSLRs are more mechanically complex because they have the mirror mechanism, the prism in, the, uh, in that bump housing on top to redirect the light into the viewfinder. So it's, it requires more expensive components, more precise engineering that just can't be replaced by electronics. So uh, it's just gonna be always a little more complex to make a DSLR. Mechanically, anyway. Uh, DSLRs, because of their nature, because of that mirror, they have uh, generally less video capabilities. Um, that mirror, when they go into a video mode, DSLRs have to switch to a mirrorless camera. So the mirror flips up, and then you're getting the electronic viewfinder kind of view. Uh, you're looking through the back screen, uh, and then the camera functions with a different autofocus system, a different metering system everything changes so it's kind of like the worst of both worlds oftentimes uh, in those uh, video capabilities. Uh, it works uh, and they make nice videos but uh, it's not as capable a video camera as a mirrorless. Um, and then related to all of this is um, I think the manufacturers have kind of decided that um, they're not going to make any upgrades anytime soon or any new systems even. Uh, I know 
there's no new uh, rumored or announced systems from Canon and Nikon. Sony has completely gotten out of the uh, DSLR uh, manufacturing uh, arena. So yeah, that's there. If you're looking for a new camera, it probably won't be a new generation of DSLR camera anytime soon. All right, the mirrorless advantages, the advantages of the mirrorless camera, they tend to be smaller and lighter. That's the first one, especially when they were first being announced and marketed. That was one of the main things. I know that was something I considered when I switched, but the, the let's be honest, the minute you put, hang on, the minute you put a big telephoto fast zoom lens on there, it is no longer a small and light camera system. The body is relatively small and light, but you still got two pounds of glass hanging off of it. So um, physics. Um, but the body does tend to be uh, a little thinner uh, because you don't have the depth needed for uh, the light to hit the prism and move around. Uh, so that is certainly a case. Uh, I know Sony's full frame uh, A7 series is remarkably small. It is about the size of my APS-C smaller sensor uh, Fuji, uh, which is quite a bit of engineering magic. All right, uh, they are quieter, as I have mentioned, um, because they don't have the mirror uh, going up and down. And you can even move them into a completely silent mode of using an electronic shutter, which has some advantages in that it is silence, but there are, depending on your system, some imaging weirdness that can result. So just pay attention to that. Uh, recently, a couple weeks ago, my wife and I uh, photographed a church wedding. Uh, and after the after the ceremony, uh, the event coordinator came up to us and told us, you are the quietest photographers we've ever had, at least disruptive because your cameras weren't making a lot of noise or any noise that they could even really hear. So uh, in a lot of settings, uh, quieter is good. If you want to be stealthy, be uh, fly on the wall, uh, the mirrorless will help you do that. So one of my favorite features of mirrorless cameras is the electronic viewfinder and the way I can set it up to show me the preview of what the exposure is gonna look like. So this means I am no longer surprised by my exposure when I'm looking through the lens. Uh, when I'm looking through the viewfinder and I make an exposure change, my viewfinder view will get brighter or darker. On a DSLR, when you're looking through the viewfinder and you're making an exposure change, it always looks the same through the viewfinder. So on a, on a mirrorless camera, when I change my exposure, and in this case, make it darker, I see the preview that shows the image is darker. Uh, I have to show you on the view on the LCD screen on the back, but uh, the viewfinder, the electronic viewfinder here works the same. And I love that. I am no longer surprised or forget when I go from a dark space to a bright space or vice versa, change your exposure because you see it in the viewfinder. So uh, that has been one of the main surpr pleasant surprises when I first started using this system and the reason I don't see myself ever going back to DSLRs. That exposure preview, white balance preview is huge in uh, helping me avoid Michael moments and mistakes. <laughs> Mirrorless cameras have uh, better video capabilities uh, without, without having that mirror mechanism they have to account for and move, into, move out of the way to create videos. Um, they're just ready to go as a video machine. So they have put a lot of energy and uh, feature upgrades through the years. So many of the cameras out now will do 4K video. Uh, some of the newer higher end cameras will do 8K video, which is crazy to me. Um, I grew up with cathode ray tube television, so 8K is amazing. Uh, so better video, better video focusing, better video features, better uh, systems built around video are available with mirrorless. So if that's a part of your photography life or YouTube life, uh, mirrorless would be the way to go. Uh, if you don't care about video capabilities, well, it's there if you ever need it. Um, another advantage in the mirrorless system land is the fact that uh, there are new systems uh, planned and announced uh, in just about every manufacturer except Pentax. <laughs> um, Sony seems to come out with a new camera every other week. I kind of joke, but it seems true. Um, 
uh, Nikon and Canon have both uh, committed to uh, mirrorless systems and have announced or at least previewed uh, a new flagship camera, their highest end camera. Uh, Sony is already there with their high end camera. And uh, there are, uh, again, all these systems just keep growing both in the cameras and in uh, the lens offerings. Another advantage of mirrorless, and I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about sensor size, but I'm gonna briefly ignore that. Um, there is a medium format option available in mirrorless. So uh, Fujifilm makes uh, a 100 megapixel and a 50 megapixel. Uh, the sensor is about 30% larger uh, than the full frame camera. So um, you get higher resolution, in either like I said, 50 or 100 megapixel. Uh, Hasselblad also makes uh, systems using that same sensor, uh, those same two sensors. So you, if you wanted to go even bigger, you have that option with mirrorless. And then uh, the last advantage uh, that I'll talk about here is um, you can, there are adapters available for both legacy systems. So let's say you were in Nikon uh, and you wanted to use a lens that you previously used on your DSLR, you can get an adapter to use that lens uh, with autofocus and auto uh, exposure and all the electronic functionality through Canon. Uh, you can also adapt old legacy glass from or vintage glass from the 50s and 60s. Get an old Russian lens if you want um, and get some really interesting looks that way. Um, depending on how you configure, uh, you can even adapt third party. Like there are adapters for uh, Nikon and Canon and so I don't think there's Sony. Nikon and Canon you can adapt to Fujifilm uh, and vice versa. So you can do all sorts of adapting with um, the uh, mirrorless system, so it gives you lots and lots of advantages and options. Options are good. All right, let's do some disadvantages in mirrorless land. Uh, first disadvantage is uh, this, this EVF, the electronic viewfinder, and the screen. Um, they're not as good in bright light. So if you're on, on a bright sunny day, uh, you got it. This is how I take photos on a bright sunny day. I do this. Uh, it's highly sophisticated. Um, so. It's just the nature of the current uh, limits of the technology and uh, all that, um, but uh, there's a workaround. <laughs> um, shorter battery life uh, is an issue with, uh, or a disadvantage with uh, uh, mirrorless cameras. When this camera is on, it is sending uh, current to the sensor all the time. It's usually powering a screen. Uh, and with that smaller body, you have a smaller physical battery, which can hold less charge, which means you get shorter battery life. Uh, I have probably six or seven batteries for this camera. Uh, so on a long wedding day, I'll use five. So it, yeah. Um, currently, uh, because uh, mirrorless cameras have not been at this relatively advanced stage for very long, um, there isn't quite as large a market uh, for used cameras or lenses, uh, and the systems aren't just quite as big yet. So again, and with the hist lack of history relatively to DSLRs, uh, there's just not as much of a used market available, but that's growing and changing as people are experimenting with different camera systems and, and different lenses. So um, yeah, there's still uh, some options, but not as big or as many options available as in DSLR cameras. And that's the list of DSLR advantages, disadvantages, mirrorless advantages, and disadvantages. So at the end, we're still left with the question, mirrorless or DSLR. And as I mentioned earlier, what's best for you is going to be up to you. I hope this info has been helpful. Um, one thing you can know for sure is the image quality between systems will be the similar will be similar or the same. Uh, the image quality is not an issue. It's basically operationally and in somewhat um, choices around specifics that are different between the different systems. Um, I began my debate with uh, about mirrorless versus DSLR back in 2012 when a photographer named Trey Ratcliffe wrote an article uh, uh, DSLRs are dead, uh, and I was like, mm, no, I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for the change. I don't want to change. Change is, ah. And um, at the time, for me, uh, DSL, I mean, mirrorless cameras weren't ready for me, or I wasn't ready for them. There were still some disadvantages 
that were a little stronger than I was willing to put up with at the time. But if you fast forward two years from that to 2014, I did switch. I switched to the Fuji X system. I have the X-T1 back here still. X-T2 is my overhead cam. My X-T3 is recording this video. Uh, so I'm a fan and I really, really uh, like the system, especially that exposure preview in the EVF. So I don't see myself switching anytime soon. Uh, I do believe soon, I don't know when, mirrorless is going to be the way. Uh, the, there's just too much of a business case for the camera manufacturers because the technology of DSLRs is so mature and system upgrades are incremental that uh, if you want to get people to buy new cameras, you need to give them something new, new, and shiny. And currently, that's mirrorless. Uh, there's more room to grow the technology still. So uh, a system upgrade from one generation to another will be a bigger upgrade and change in uh, features and specifications than is currently possible with DSLR. So again, from a business standpoint, I think mirrorless is, our, mirrorless is the future. So Trey Radcliffe made that prediction in 2012. We'll just be curious to see when that actually comes true. So I hope your um, decision making goes well. If you have any questions you want to ask, please leave them down below as you consider your next camera purchase. If you've recently switched from one system to the other, either direction, uh, and have some thoughts and comments, please share those below. As I'm required by YouTube law, please subscribe to this channel. That would be greatly appreciated. Like this video. That helps train the algorithm about videos you like. And then, um, yeah, let a friend know or 10 or 20 about how awesome uh, this video was for you, assuming it was. And, uh, yeah, we'll have more conversations about camera stuff in the future. I look forward to it, and I hope you uh, stay well, stay healthy, have fun creating photos, and um, enjoy your new camera if you're getting one. So until the next video, bye for now.